morning, everybody. Good morning. And welcome here to St. Philip and St. James here in Gruby, whether you're here in person or joining us online. We're praying that the technology keeps working, but if it isn't and you pick this up, I will put it onto YouTube, as I did remember to bring the SD card so it's all being recorded as well. But welcome. And today we're going to be thinking about how we use our gifts and how we are able to serve God, whoever we are, um, with whatever the gifts that we have uh, may be. Can we move this slide on, Andrew? See some potatoes, which gives you a hint as to what we might be using as our theme. Um, but we are here together to worship God, so as we come together, we pray. And let's say this together. God of heaven and earth, you have called us to be part of the body of Christ. In our fellowship, strengthen our friendship and trust. As we worship, lead us to honour you and to recognise the gift of your presence among us. Through our prayer, open our hearts to your truth. And in all we learn, Teach us, us the depths of your purpose and plan. Equip us to be witnesses of your transforming love in our lives. Through your blessing, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, you might have noticed that we have maybe what feels a bit of a harvesty theme. But as we think about the gifts that God gives to us, we're going to sing, because we can sing in church once again, mm. maybe again to keep everybody as safe as possible, sort of quietly behind masks, um, but we're going to sing, we plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land, but we remember that it is through God's almighty hand that all is grown, including the gifts in us. So please, if you are able, do stand as we sing together, we plough the fields and scatter. <laughs> Thank you. 
Who likes presents? Who likes gifts? Um, yes. Mm. I was kind of expecting every hand to sort of shoot up. <laughs> in there. I mean, come on, let's face it. We all like to get presents, don't we? Yeah. We all like gifts. I wonder, what's the most unusual gift you've ever been given? What's that gift when you've, you've looked at it and you've gone, really? Or what is it? <laughs> what sort of gifts have you had? Or just the best gifts? Yeah, Adrian. When I was 19, I was so excited. Looks like I got some trouser press. A trouser press! Wow! <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Someone is clearly thinking you need to be prepared for the world of work or something. Yeah. So at 19, a trouser press. Wow, just what you wanted. Keith, did you? I was just thinking I had a trouser press as well. Oh, oh two trouser presses! <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> Fantastic. What other? What other gifts have you had? It might have been a really great gift. What's been your favourite gift? Chris. The most useful gift I've ever had was just a small, very tactile stone, which said "Don't forget" on it, and I use it almost every day. I've put it in places to remind me either to do something or to take something somewhere. Brilliant, brilliant. I love it. A do not forget stone, something which is really nice to touch and just to remind you to do things. I think I could do with one or ten of those. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. What, anything else? I like chocolates. Chocolates, yeah. I think a lot of us get chocolate and I absolutely love chocolate. And I have to say that when I get chocolate, given chocolate, it's brilliant. <laughs> Oh yes. Well, we're going to need to open it in a minute, aren't we? Are we are going to need to open it? But we always tend to think of gifts as things, don't we? But just look around you for a moment. Just look around. There are a whole series of gifts sitting around you. The people in this church. And the people at home who are joining us as well, the people who we know and we love. Because actually, people are great gifts to us because they help us, they talk to us, they love us, they support us. And I think we often forget the greatest gifts that we have often are the people, our families and our friends. But anyway, yeah, I think we are wondering, aren't we, what's, what's in my box? What have I brought? So, I think somebody wants to come and help me open the box. Piper, do you want to come and help me open the box? We need to find out what's in the box, don't we? Come on then. Right. Can you, can you help me open it? Go on. That's it. That's it. Grab in there. Grab in there. Grab in there. Grab in there. Give it a big tear. Yes. I hope you're not going to be disappointed by the contents. <laughs> open it up. That's it. Oh, go, oh, brilliant. A bit more. A bit more, come on. Come on. There we go. And look, we've got... Oh, a box! It, 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 I think it's a shoe box. Do you think it's a nice pair of shoes? Do you think it's a nice pair of shoes? Should we open up the box and have a look, Piper? Yeah. Help me open it. Open it up. What have we got? Oh. Uh, potatoes. Potatoes. That's right, we've got... <laughs> Potatoes. I hope none of you are too disappointed um, that we have potatoes. But potatoes are great! And we're going to be hearing a little bit more about potatoes and why I brought a, a box of potatoes in a minute. But I hope that that has captured your imagination as we just think about that. But of course, potatoes are one of the gifts that we get from God too. Who provides the water and the sunshine and all that allows these to grow and also will allow us to grow. Next slide. Because Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. So you are to love one another. So to remember the gifts that we are to one another, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We do offer one another a little sign of peace, give another a wave. Um, 
as we just remember the gifts that each and every one of us are. Our potatoes just here for now, because they will feature again in a moment. Um, but we're now going to have our reading, um, which is taken from Ephesians. Up here, a prisoner for the master. I want you to get out there and walk. Better yet, run on the road God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline, not in fits and starts, but steadily, pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love, alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. You are all called to travel on the same road and in the same direction, so stay together both outwardly and inwardly. You have one master, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who rules over all, works through all, and is present in all. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. But that doesn't mean you should all look and speak and act the same. Out of the generosity of Christ, each of us is given his own gift. The text for this is, he climbed up the high mountain, he captured the enemy and seized the plunder, he handed it all out in gifts to the people. Is it not true that the one who climbed up also climbed down, down to the valley of earth, and the one who climbed down is the one who climbed back up, up to the highest heaven. He handed out gifts above and below, filled heaven with his gifts, filled earth with his gifts. He handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor teacher to train Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working within Christ's body, the church until we're all moving rhythmically and easily with each other, efficient and graceful in response to God's Son, fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive like Christ. No prolonged infancies among us, please. We'll not tolerate babes in the woods, small children who are easy prey for predators. God wants us to grow up to know the whole truth and tell it in love, like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything we do. He keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us, nourishing us so that we will grow up healthy in God and robust in love. Good morning, everybody. Jane precariously oh, onto that one. Sometimes you get so used to wearing the mask you actually forget you've got it on. <laughs> but yes, good morning everyone. As Jane precariously wakes her way back up into the organ loft, I'd like to show you something. Does anyone know what this is? <laughs> have it, that's close, that's close. Any better attempts than I can. Yeah, it's a potato. That's right. I love potatoes. Potatoes taste good, but full of vitamins and minerals that help us stay healthy and strong. And there are many different ways that we can cook potatoes. One of my favourite ways to eat a potato is to bake it. I love baked potatoes. I bake it in the oven for about an hour, split it open, top it with cheese and beans or chilli. Mmm, that sounds good. In fact, it sounds so good that I think I'll take this home with me today and I'll bake it for my supper this evening. 
show you something else. Does anyone know what this is? <laughs> yes, you've guessed it. <laughs> it's a little potato. <laughs> Try the potato. I love potatoes. They taste good. They're full of vitamins and minerals that help us stay healthy. And there are many different ways that we can cook them. One of my other favourite ways to eat a potato is to mash it. I peel the potato, boil it in water, and then after about 20 minutes or so, drain off the water, add a little bit of milk, a little bit of butter, and then mash it. <laughs> and sometimes I eat the mashed potatoes with gravy, and sometimes I eat them plain. Mashed potatoes are so good that I sometimes I actually cut it up, cut up the meat that I'm eating, dip that in a bit of potato, mashed potato, and eat that. They're so good. In fact, that actually sounds so good. Well, I think I'll take this potato home with me today and I'll have it with my tea tomorrow. I'd like to show you something else. <laughs> Does anybody know what this is? <laughs> you guessed it. It's a potato. <laughs> I love potatoes. They taste good. They're full of vitamins and minerals to help us stay healthy. And there are many different ways that we can cook potatoes. Another way that I like to cook potatoes is to make chips. Now, chips aren't quite as good for me as baked potatoes and mashed potatoes because the chips have to be fried in cooking fat or oil, which adds a little bit of fat to them. But I still like to eat them. In fact, chips sound so good. But I think I'll take this potato home with me and make chips to go with my tea the day after tomorrow. <laughs> so here we have three potatoes. Do you know what the amount of just uh, of that food on your plate when you have that to eat? one time. Do you know what that's called? It's called a serving. And probably that name came from the fact that when someone gives you some food, they serve you. But there's another way that we can actually think about it. Remember the vitamins and the minerals that I said are in the potato? We can think of the potato as serving whoever eats it. It serves you or me by giving us the nutrition that we need. The potato is serving me when I eat it as part of my meal. So how are people like potatoes? Well, as we look at the potato, it serves me by giving me nutrition. But it can do that in many different ways. I could bake it, I could mash it, I could fry it, and I could cook the potatoes in other ways as well. There are many different ways that the simple potato can serve me. Potatoes serve people, and people serve God. But guess what? There are many different ways that we can serve God. Ed's already spoken with some. Come on, give us some, give, shout out some ideas of how we can serve God. Spread the word. Spread the word. Pray for people. Pray for people. Visiting people. Visiting people. Ah, right, we're, we're on a roll now. Right, come on. <laughs> Check out some more visiting people, praying for people. Oh. If, I, if I look at myself, I am a 
member of the PCC. Is that serving God? Um, I'm on the, the buildings group for this for this church. I mean, bell ringer when we can ring bells. Is that serving God? That's calling people to worship. There's other people here. We've got flowers up on the on the altar there. I don't know who did those, but somebody somebody serves God by doing so. You've walked into a church full of cobwebs, haven't you? No, there are people who are cleaning the church. There's all sorts of ways that we can end up serving God. There's all sorts of jobs that we can do. It's been mentioned about praying. We can all do that, every single one of us. We all can pray for people. We can visit people. We can go and just listen to somebody, that listening ear. Ed spoke about those uh, different gifts that God had given us earlier to each and every one of us. We thought of lots of ways that we can serve God. And those are all different. But the most important thing is that they ultimately serve God. And that uh, reading that Jane read to us today uh, from the letter to the Ephesians, Paul, who wrote much of the New Testament, gives us some ideas as well. One of, those, one of those verses in there, verse 11, said the gifts that were, the gifts, that, the gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Or as the message version that Jane read uh, puts it, he handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist and pastor teacher to train Christ followers in skilled servant work. These are just some of the ways that Paul says that we can serve God. They're all different, but they all ultimately serve God. Now, I want you to think about one more way that shows how people are different from potatoes. Our wonderfully versatile potato could only serve one person one way and only one time. After I eat this potato, it'll be gone. I can never eat it again. But people aren't like that. Each one of us can serve God many times and in many different ways. In fact, if you listen, God will probably ask you to serve him in different ways at different times in your life. But the two important things for us all to remember about this are that, number one, everyone is able to serve God, so never think that you can't. And then number two, God is never done with you. God is always able to use you. Even when you think you don't have any abilities, even if someday you think you're too old or too tired, even if you think you've done something so badly wrong that God won't ever want to hear from you ever again, he still loves you, he will still use you if you let him. So let us always be alert for different ways that we can serve God using the gifts that he's given us and always listening for God's direction in our lives. That way, we'll always be able to serve God just like the humble potato. So, let's just take a moment and just let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this new day well, thank you for making potatoes that give us some of the nutrition that we need. Help us to remember that we can serve you in many different ways and help us to see how you want us each as individuals to serve you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.
Why do we do all of these things? Why do we want to serve God with the gifts that we have? Because we want to see Jesus lifted high and praised not just here, but everywhere. And so, to enable that, we're going to sing. We want to see Jesus lifted high. So please stand if you are able as we sing together. Of all the events of the Olympics, 
the birthday card, which shows others are thinking of us. We are truly grateful for the love we feel when we open our eyes and see the gifts and talents of those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Next, we're going to draw some ears. You draw the ears. Okay. Father God, help us to listen to one another so that we can respond to people when they're in need, when they are lonely and want to talk to someone. Let us be that friend to them when they are in pain or sad. Help us to be supportive and caring. We thank you that you are always there to listen to us, to our prayers and our requests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, we're going to draw the mouth. to use our mouths to share God's word and to tell other people about your incredible love for all of us. We are so happy that we can praise you. When others are happy, let us join in with their celebrations. When they are unhappy, help us to say something comforting that will bring them your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Next, I'd like you to draw some hands. Father God, we use our hands for many things, for making and mending, for creating, for holding and loving, remembering that in all we do, we are trying to do your work. Be with us as we look for opportunities to be involved with these tasks, however small, that help to glorify your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, I'd like you to add some feet. Dear Lord, we use our feet to take us wherever we need to be, to the shops, to work, to visit our friends and family, to the places where we can enjoy your beautiful creation, also to the places where people need our help. Be with us, Lord, as we walk on our journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, Mr. Potato Head has a hat, so can we draw a hat, please? Any sort of hat. Lord, the hat reminds us that we all need protection, not just from the weather, but from all kinds of things that are happening in the world. Please guide our leaders to make the right decisions that keep us safe, whether it's from COVID-19 or or from unrest in other areas. Help us to provide shelter to those who require it and to give generously to people who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, 
we mustn't forget to draw a nose. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to smell your wonderful creation and all the joys that nature brings us. Thank you also for the opportunity to smell wonderful aroma of food and all that you provide for us. Help us to make sure that others are provided for so that the hungry can also share in the plentiful bounty that we grow on this amazing planet. And Lord, just as the nose is at the centre of our face, let it be a reminder that you are at the centre of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's look at the pictures we've drawn now. Do you want to hold them up? <laughs> oh, yes. For those at home, they are amazing. You'll have to come to church and have a look. They are brilliant. So, We'll finish by saying we thank you, Lord, for all the gifts you have given each and every one of us. Help us to acknowledge the gifts we have and to help us to use them wisely in our daily lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us conclude our prayers today by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. we can use each and every part of us in God's service and one of those things that we can use is our feet and of course our hearts and all that we are and what we need to learn therefore is to be in the rhythm of God and attentive to all that he calls us to do and to be so as part of that we're going to sing again and we're going to ask God to teach us to dance to the beat of his heart as we remember that we can use all that we are in his service. So stand if you are able as we sing together. Teach me to dance. <laughs> Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to.
to hope in the day of your glory. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. service that we're called to in God's name, but not just to one another, but to our world, to the communities of which we are a part, as we share that love of God with the gifts that we have, have through his love for us. And of course, one of the things that we do as a family and celebrating those gifts is we remember things like people's birthdays, because I know that Ollie Matthews has his 17th birthday around about now. Um, and as we're allowed to sing, I'm hoping that he might be watching at home, and if not, we can catch up, we can catch up a little bit later because we'll tell him. We're going to sing Happy Birthday to Ollie, because we can, because we can sing. Hurrah! So, as we remember Ollie on his 17th birthday, we get to sing Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to you, Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ollie. Happy birthday to you. Well, give a big clap. <laughs> well, let us pray. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.